Hello and welcome back. In this tutor final tutorial video I'd just like to make a couple of suggestions on what you could do to push the game a little further along. So this would be a good way to you know to polish up the game a little and develop your skills in Unity further. So the first suggestion would be to improve the lock of the game. Now this would primarily you could be achieved by replacing the textures. So we're just pretty much using one, one or two textures for everything here. So you could change the textures for the paddles, the ball, the boundary in the background and you could also look at the trail render component which would draw a line after the ball it's kind of quite a nice effect you could also add music to the game now to do this you would likely add an audio one way of doing it would be to add an audio source to the game control object and what you would do is you would set it to play on awake so it plays in the game starts and you could also loop it another thing you could do is add a pause game function now this one way to do this would be to press escape. When the player presses escape you run the lo an instruction that stops the time in the game now so you're looking for input is escape and you want to call the instruction time dot time scale equals zero to prevent time from passing and then to resume the game again you set time dot time scale equals one. You could also add some power ups to the game and these could speed up the ball, they could reduce the size of your opponent's paddle or reverse the direction of the paddle. There are probably some other things you could add to some other types of power-ups. So to do this you're going to want to make a power-up object. Now to give you a very quick rundown on how you might do this, you want to make a pretty much a standard 2D object. You're going to want a circle collider and I think you're going to want to set it as trigger. You don't want a rigid body 2D because you don't want the ball bouncing off the power-up, you want it going through it. So when the ball passes through the power up you will look for on the ball script you will have to add a new method called on trigger enter 2d i think and then the power up you should probably tag it as power up so in that method on collision or on trigger 2d enter you want to check if the game object's tag is a power up and you probably want to find out what type of power up it is and then based on that you want to you know either reverse the direction of the paddle or reduce the size or make your own paddle a little bigger, whichever you like. Um, now you're going to want to use a prefab to do that. Now to make a prefab you it's a very kind of fundamental system in Unity and it allows you to instantiate a pre-made object. So you would make the object in the scene roughly as I've described. You create a prefabs folder, you drag the object into the prefabs folder and then when you want to make the uh, create a power up in the area instantiated maybe you would you might base it on the number of times that the ball has hit something or time which you sh you'd both you'd know how to do both of them at this point. So you would in game control script you want to create a field called public game object power up prefab and then you drag the prefab for the power up into that and whenever you whatever your trigger is for creating it you just run the instantiate instruction and you could learn a little more about instantiate in unity's api it's it's fairly it's fairly handy so that would that'll give you an understanding of prefabs how prefabs work if you don't already understand it and that's kind of a pretty important thing um, that's pretty much all I have for you. I hope um, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial, uh, or that at least it's been of some use to you. It's the first tutorial I've made, and I may look into making some more. So if this is something you might be interested in, you're most welcome to subscribe to the channel so you get um, notifications if I release any further videos. Now, if you have any interest in the games that I've developed, now I've developed Deadstone which is on Steam and I'm working on Vigilantes which is it's a while off but of about a year's work done in that. So if you have interest in either of those um, you could stop by my Facebook page I'll leave a link for that or even if you just want to drop by and tell me what you think of the tutorial series. So that's all for me and I'd like to wish you luck on your own adventures in game development.